All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our Bias in Algorithms 2.0 workshop today. Thank you for coming. And we've just got some information. If you want to put any kind of comment um, or unmute yourself during this presentation, we're just going to, um, you're going to appear in the recording. So just a little disclaimer there. And we're just gonna go ahead and introduce ourselves. So my name is Leah Valletta. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I am the GTA in the Teaching and Learning Programs Department in the Hodges Library. And hi everyone, my name is Grace Therrell. I also use she, her pronouns, and I am an online learning librarian in Hodges. All right, so what we're going to do today, we're gonna to have 30 minute workshop that is going to be recorded. And then we're going to have 30 minutes of unrecorded Q&A afterwards. And we are going to review just a little bit about what algorithms are and how we see them in our lives. We're gonna um, hear from some of you about how you might see them in your lives, because I'm sure you do. Uh, then we're going to go on to talk about how algorithms affect what information we see in our lives. Um, kind of some review from last time, but a lot of new stuff in there as well. And then last, we're going to kind of just generally explore how algorithms might affect the information that you see even here at the library in your academic research. All right, so first we're just gonna talk about what they are and where you might see them. So what an algorithm is. So again, we talked about this a little bit in our workshop last semester about algorithms. So if you want a little bit more on this introduction, just send you to that first workshop. Um, but generally an algorithm is a rule-based process for solving problems. And an important point there is just that they sort of change depending on how you interact with them. They're very dynamic, they're always moving. All right. So we're gonna just go ahead and um, hear from you all if you wanna go to this Padlet link. Um, we're sure that a lot of you have are familiar with algorithms in some way. We see them so often in our digital lives. Um, and if you use social media, you might even be more attuned to this. Um, but since we figured it's likely that you've encountered them, we are just curious to hear about where you see algorithms in your life online. Um, anything like that, and any kind of just ideas that you have about them. So where you see them, and anything else you want to say about where you see them. All right, let's see. Suggested ads, that's always a good one. The macro <laughs> Socks, we're seeing some socks with pets faces on them, definitely. Shopping websites, Google Scholar results, it's a good one. Those ads, those ads are, the ads are real. <laughs> I feel like ads are probably where a lot of us see algorithms and how, or I feel like ads are one of the ways that we notice really algorithms because like they're so responsive. <laughs> <laughs> to all of the things that we search for and stuff. So yeah, like socks with your with pets faces on them if you've got a cat or a hamster even or something. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, I like the the people you may know section. That one can be weird sometimes too. <laughs> Eerily accurate algorithm every now and then. For sure. Social media, how things are organized, definitely. Autofill responses. That's also a really good one. Yeah, I didn't even think about autofill, but I guess we kind of, we talked about that in our first algorithm workshop, Leah and I did, um, when we looked a little bit at like Google and we looked at our individual autofill responses and how different they were. So, yeah, yeah even, really we even looked at like work computer versus home computers, like dramatically different stuff, so. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for sharing. This definitely gives us a good start. And um, this is some of the stuff that Grace and I were talking about when we were planning this workshop. Um, so yeah, it's, we definitely feel you on a lot of those ones. They are everywhere. All right. So now that we've kind of 
talked about where we see them, how they come up in our everyday experiences. We're just going to kind of talk about the context of algorithms. Um, so in the last session, we talked about how algorithms are not neutral and they reflect a very specific um, priority of an organization. And sometimes they can reflect the dominant cultural narratives that we experience, um, which can exclude people who don't necessarily fit neatly into those narratives. Um, but we wanted to be clear that while algorithms are not neutral, they are also not, and again, we touched on this a little bit, but they are also not inherently good or inherently bad. Um, so if you wanna go to the next slide. Um, so I guess in order to get the most from our information and from our media, you kind of just need to look at the context of the algorithm, which isn't always easy. Um, but we can't really avoid algorithms, honestly, at this point, um, nor should we, because sometimes they can be really useful. So we just sort of wanted to take the time to draw attention to the fact that a lot of times being algorithmically literate, if you will, um, is more about just understanding how you're interacting with the algorithm and how the algorithm is interacting with you and just sort of understanding that context so you can still use your social media or whatever you don't have to feel like oh it's you know generating all of these algorithms like I don't want anything to do with it that's not really what we're saying um, we're just saying that by examining the context surrounding the service that you're using you can gain some clarity about what you're actually getting and why and that can be really helpful to sort of making sense of all of this algorithmically generated information um so you know maybe an algorithm is prioritizing a certain type of information but maybe that's exactly the information that you needed, or maybe getting ads is annoying, but maybe it also really helps you find things that you need. So they're not all good or all bad, um, but they do have specific contexts. So when dealing with algorithms, um, it's really about just understanding that they're there, um, thinking about what they're doing there and who they're serving, and then kind of being able to use them in this context. So we have come up with some questions and this is not at all an exhaustive list. So if you even think of any while we're going through these, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, but we just made this list of questions that we thought would be useful to consider that will kind of help you make sense of the overarching structure of the algorithm um, and make it a little bit easier for you to appreciate the content that you're looking at. Um, because sometimes, it's a little easier to see what you're supposed to be getting out of a service and what the service maybe is getting out of you using the service because um, we especially probably all see this with things that are free. If you're not paying um, for a service, you're probably paying with something, either your data or your attention or your time or something like that. So um, that's kind of what we're trying to get going thinking about today. So some questions that we have are just, what organization is hosting this service very simply? So um, just, you know, what are they? Are they a social media outlet? Is it Google? Is it something else? Is it a job search engine? Is it a clothing company? Um, and just kind of thinking about like, what is this organization and what are they trying to do? Um, how is it funded? How can you tell? Um, it's not always that easy to tell how something is funded, but if you can't tell why, or um, you know, what, what other stakeholders are involved in this. Um, and what benefits and drawbacks are they to are there to using the algorithm or the service? You might know that this algorithm is taking a certain amount of your data, and then you might have to sort of balance that with what, like how much you need the service. What is the service providing you? Um, is it working with you? Um, that kind of thing. And again, this is a really vague overarching question. It's not one that's meant to have an answer. It's just kind of something to consider while you're interacting with these algorithms. And then um, finally, is the algorithm, like what type of information is the algorithm prioritizing? Is it prioritizing the best information in terms of quality? Is it um, prioritizing sponsored information? Or is it prioritizing something else entirely? Is it 
using your data for this information? Is it um, just simply giving you the results that paid to be at the top at the top? What exactly is the structure of the prioritization of the system that you're using that is using an algorithm? Um, and I just wanted to add here that this isn't really easy, like you're not going to have a checklist and go through and satisfactorily check them all off and be like, great, I can use this algorithm. Um, sometimes it's really hard to figure out funding information, it might take you like way too much time to even gather all of this information before using a service, but just understanding that there's a value in just considering it and just being aware that there might be things going on that you can't see and this might be impacting the information that you are ultimately giving to interact with. And on that note, I will pass it off to Grace to kind of talk about how this fits into your academic research. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we kind of reviewed what algorithms are and we've talked a little bit about how they show up, put them into context and, and ask some of these questions, but I'm sure you're wondering if you're watching this video, right? If you're here in this workshop, <laughs> you're probably like, but what about the research, right? I, I have to do research. I have to have, you know, sources for my assignment. Like, how does this do me any good when I'm doing research? Um, and that's a totally valid question. So now that we've kind of talked about these things, we're gonna put it in more of a research context. So when you're doing research on a topic for an assignment and you search for information, right? Whether you're looking for a scholarly source or a peer reviewed source, whether you're looking for a primary resource, whether you're looking for a news article, if you're just learning to gain some background, background information, whatever you're looking for, um, right? How can you think about algorithms and understand how they're affecting the results that you're seeing? So to talk about this, we're going to look at a sample research topic and we're going to explore the different results that we see first when we search in these different places. Um, Hopefully this will work. <laughs> if it doesn't, then we've got screenshots, so no worries, but we're gonna try to see them um, in real time so we can scroll and interact a little bit more. Um, but all of the searching platforms that we're gonna look at use algorithms, every single one, um, and they use these algorithms to determine what results we see and what results we see first. Um, basically what the algorithm is programmed to think is most relevant. So. Again, let's see what this looks like. So we're gonna pretend that we're doing research on Black Lives Matter, on the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and so we're gonna look at four different places that you might go to look for information. And again, we're just gonna kind of see what search results pull up first um, and think more about how the algorithm affects what search results you're seeing when you research. So first we have Google, <laughs> right? Regular old Google. Um, and so I guess my question for you here um, is what do you notice about the kinds of results that Google gives us first? Go ahead and type an answer into the chat, um, but I will scroll a little bit, but looking at these results that Google gives us, um, what are you noticing about these results? So we have an answer, mostly news stories. Yeah, we have a lot of news here. Um, so right here in this block, right, we've got news stories. Um, if we scroll down, we've got the New York Times, that's news, um, The Guardian, BBC. We also have somebody said, who said social media websites. Um, so yeah, again, if you scroll down, here's Black Lives Matter on Facebook, Black Lives Matter on Twitter. Um, <clears throat> we get the profiles over here in this box. Um, Somebody has also said the related searches are interesting. Yeah, so down here at the bottom, um, the mission statement, timeline, protest, riots, news, essay, foundation, picture. Um, so yeah, thinking about those related searches as well. So yeah, lots of different things that we're seeing here. Um, we are getting a lot of general information, right? So the very first thing it points us to is this homepage. Um, and then also the Wikipedia, as you can see, I've clicked on the Wikipedia link before because um, it's it's a different color. I, oh, even look, it says I visited this page on March 8th, 2021. Um, so yeah, it, it shows us um, 
right? It shows us more of this general information. That's what it's prioritizing. Um, Another thing is that it's potentially privileging certain information based on the search engine optimization, which is a fancy computer science algorithm word um, or phrase, the SEO, maybe you've heard, you've heard the term SEO, um, but that's something within the algorithm, right? That it's prioritizing. So like people can pay more money and get their search results bumped up near the top. Um, it also could be, uh, and very likely is privileging or potentially add revenue resources, right? So if you click on social media, if you go to a news website, if you go to just a regular website, right? Chances are you're probably gonna see ads and Google is an advertising company. Um, so it's also privileging the information and the sources that are gonna generate that ad revenue, which is gonna make Google money. <laughs> um, so again, like Leah said earlier, this is not an inherently good or bad thing. It's just something to recognize um, and think about. So when you're going to Google, those these might be the kinds of um, sources, the kind of information that's gonna be popped up to the top. Um, so if you're looking for news, if you're looking for more general information, if you wanna find social media sources, uh, Google is probably a really good place to start. And again, just thinking about what kinds of things you're gonna find there. Next, we are going to turn to the library. Um, so this is OneSearch. If you've used the library's website before, oh, the giant cursor is back. The giant cursor left earlier. <laughs> um, if you've used the library website before to search for things, um, if you've used OneSearch, this will look familiar to you. Um, and again, I'm gonna ask you the same question here. So like, if when I'm searching Black Lives Matter, what do you notice about the kind of results that one search gives us first. What do we see here? I'll scroll a little bit. So we have an answer, lots of books and eBooks. Yeah, <clears throat> um, something, so this is something that's more content related. So conflict versus all lives matter, protests, et cetera, some history. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, the content is interesting for sure. It's not as general, right? It's a little bit more specific here. Um, we also had a response that said lots of books and eBooks, right? So OneSearch is a library resource, right? We pay for this um, and what it does is it searches what the library owns and what the library pays for. So if you notice, when we say lots of books and eBooks, that is like directly from the library's collection. And so OneSearch is prioritizing those library resources, right? There are some streaming videos in here. Um, if we loaded, let's see, don't wanna ruin this. <laughs> we loaded more results. <laughs> I'm always worried about doing these things live. <laughs> um, if we load more results, right, here's an article here. Here's another article, another article. So like the further down we get, it starts pulling in some articles, but it's gonna prioritize those things that the library owns, the library collection. Um, so the eBooks and the books, the things that you can check out from Hodges Library are the things that we directly pay for as part of our collection. Um, so yeah, it's interesting to see the, con the content change a little bit, but also the type of information that you're seeing, right? Even with something like OneSearch, an algorithm is determining what's the most relevant. And for a lot of sources, especially if you start with a more general topic, um, but even if you're looking at something more specific, it's probably, one search is probably gonna try to bump up the most relevant library owned resources in the library collection. It's probably gonna bump those up first and prioritize that information. So again, just something to think about um, as you're doing your research, just asking these questions and noticing what kinds of things you see. So we've got two more left to look at Google. We looked at OneSearch. Now we're gonna go into a couple of databases. Um, and you've probably used a library database for your research. If you haven't, it's coming. <laughs> um, the first one we're gonna look at is pretty general. And this one is called Academic Search Complete. It's a very general database that searches um, a lot of disciplines at the same time. So it's not like an English database or a political science database or a chemistry database or anything like that. It searches all different, um, all different disciplines. So again, same question when you're looking at this, um, what, what results are we seeing first? What is the algorithm bumping up to the top? What do you notice here about these search results?
as I scroll a little bit. Is anything here different or noticeable about these ones? All right, so uh, we have someone who said some international perspectives. So maybe we're starting to get outside a little bit. Maybe we're broadening up um, events related to the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, oh, this just keeps going. <laughs> so one of the interesting things, um, you know, if you looked at Google, right? Like it shows you one page and you have to go to another page. One search, it stops after a few. This one just keeps going. <laughs> um, so let's see, keywords aren't in as many titles. Um, we're getting images. Yeah, so, um, right, so we have video results here. We have some images. I want to see, again, hopefully this works. Um, if I add quotation marks, I didn't do this earlier. Sometimes it's not necessary. Other times it's helpful to add quotation marks. Oh, I did it. I ruined it. Ah, <laughs> this is why you don't touch things. Um, okay, so we're just, ooh, the, the back button worked. So we're seeing some similar resources. Okay, um, so yeah, again, just seeing, um, you know, if, if we put things in quotation marks, it might, it might change a little bit, but yeah, right? So um, if you can see here in some of these, um, like this one right here, so we have subject, Black Lives Matter movement. Um, here, subject, Black Lives Matter movement, subject, 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 right? Um, so in academic search complete, you know, as I'm looking at this, one of the things that I noticed is that when you search something in academic search complete, it prioritizes what's in this subject field. So this one has Black Lives Matter in the subject field and it has Black Lives Matter um, in the title but it's not necessarily prioritizing something based obviously on content or obviously on the title. Um, it's really prioritizing what's in that subject field, right? As opposed to OneSearch, um, where if you remember back here, we have lots of different um, things that have Black Lives Matter in the title and Academic Search Complete doesn't necessarily pull things with Black Lives Matter in the title. You can change that here where you um, type in your search terms when you select a field, there's an option right here to do title. So if you really care about your search term or your topic being in the title, um, you can click that and you can kind of see what that does. I'm not gonna do it because clearly the quotation marks it didn't like, and this probably <laughs> would mess it up too and wouldn't show anything. Um, so again, just, just a different way that this algorithm works, right? It's gonna give you different kinds of information. Um, the content's gonna be different. Um, and again, what it's prioritizing and what the information that it's privileging and the information that it pushes up to the top is going to be different um, than the other things that you use. And so finally, we're going to look at one last database, which is a more subject specific database. So if you're doing subject specific research, um, this database is called P the PAIS index. Oh, no, continue working. <laughs> um, this is kind of a public policy database. So it deals with a lot of policy, law, um, things like that. And is more of a political science database. So again, as I've been asking the same question, what do you notice about the results that this is giving us first? Anything that we notice here? Lots of scholarly journals, no images so far. Yeah. Yep, we're not getting images or videos like we did on Academic Search Complete, that's for sure. I think something that I also notice, um, here we go, another answer. Some of these don't actually relate to the BLM movement. Sure. Um, yeah, something that Leah and I noticed when we were planning this workshop and we were talking about these things and looking at these is that um, like PAIS tends to um, really focus on that law and policy. And so like a lot of these seem more negatively skewed, right? Um, 
which is really, really interesting. Uh, we're talking about violence, um, like police violence. We have protests, fatal interactions and crime. Um, so again, something that like maybe is, is relating the movement to criminal activity, um, something to be aware of if you're searching for, for this kind of topic in this database. Um, yeah, and I'm sure to, so we have don't relate. Um, I'm sure to, if we actually put in the quotation marks, which again, I didn't do, <laughs> um, encountered a problem, right? So this happens sometimes, um, it'll time you out of searches, not a big deal. Um, session ended, excellent. <laughs> um, so yeah, we can go back to the slides at this point and there is a, um, there is a screenshot here. And I think I actually did quotation marks on this one. So maybe you can see a little bit better that if you use quotation marks, um, you might get, you'll probably, you'll get more relevant results, but I just forgot to do that today. But yeah, um, it's really interesting to see the kinds of, again, the kinds of sources that you're going to get because of the algorithm, right? Because the database is only is looking at a different subset of materials um, and the way that the algorithm works, it might decide to privilege um, certain information over others. So that's just kind of a larger thing for you to consider. Um, here are just some, some general things to keep in mind as you move forward and as you're doing your research. Um, just a reminder that again, all searching platforms, including our library resources use algorithms, right? And again, an algorithm is not inherently good or bad. We're not saying that they're neutral. Um, they're created by people, they are not neutral, but algorithms are useful and we use them every day. And even the library resources that you are going to look, you're gonna be using to look for research like OneSearch databases, all of these use algorithms. Um, and it's just helpful to understand how the algorithms impact the results that you see. So when you're doing research, understanding what information is gonna be privileged, um, what information might pop up first, what the database is assuming is most relevant for you, and knowing that you might have to do a little bit of digging or you might have to look in several different places to get the sources that are best for your research, right? Um, the, best in, the best source of information for your research is not always necessarily going to be the first one or in the first place that you search. So searching a lot of different um, platforms to get lots of different kinds of information is probably gonna be a good move. And then just paying attention to where you search and what results you get, right? The whole point of this is hopefully not to bog us down in a lot of different things, but just to, to increase our awareness and just ask us to start paying attention, right? Just pay attention, ask questions, um, be thoughtful when you're searching and when you're doing research, and that can be really helpful. Um, and maybe we'll, we'll spark some questions that we would love to chat with you about because this stuff is really interesting to us. Um, so we have just the reference um, for the definition we, we um, talked about at the very beginning of the workshop. And then all of the screenshots again are from our own um, feeds and accounts, our own searches. So thank you so much for being with us today. Um, if you have questions about how algorithms show up in research, if you wanna talk more about algorithms, if you need help finding sources, um, any of that, you can always chat with us um, on the library website, or you can schedule a consultation via email or through our consultation form. If you would like some one-on-one -on -one time with the librarian, we can help you kind of navigate those databases, um, navigate library resources and um, help you with your research. So do feel free to reach out to us. And so that's it. Again, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate your time and attention. Um, next week, we are starting our AMA sessions. So we have two AMA sessions. These are not gonna be recorded. They're just drop-in sessions where you can come and ask librarians, ask a couple of librarians any questions you have about research. So um, feel free to register for that if you're interested. Um, and again, thank you so much for being here. And now we are going to stop the recording um, and we will enter into Q&A time.